kind of similar, that I have given a Brandon Sanderson book five stars. Why don't you write a song about it, Spencer? This is how I feel about Quo. <laughs> Losing their minds. <laughs> So I recently read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, uh, which I wasn't planning to do if you watched my TBR, and it was because the new book Cytonic is coming out, and three good booktube friends of mine, Jess from Jess Owens, Jessie May, and Elle from Elliot Brooks were all hosting a read-along. I am not gonna make it on reading Star Sight before Cytonic comes out. But anyway, that's why I picked it up, just sort of like, I was like, well, now's the time. And as I was reading it, I found myself asking the question, is Skyward a retelling of Name of the Wind? <laughs> okay, yeah, no, not seriously, but I was really surprised by how many things in Skyward reminded me of Name of the Wind. And at first it was just like, you know, an authentic, like, this kind of reminds me of Name of the Wind. And then after I came to that realization, then I just started like finding other things that like kind of fit that as well that I wouldn't necessarily have, wouldn't by themselves have made me go, this is like Name of the Wind. But like once I started looking, I was like, hey, there's actually a lot of parallels. So maybe it's no accident for everybody that was like losing their minds. And I'm not kidding, losing their minds <laughs> over the fact that I gave Skyward five stars because it's by Brandon Sanderson. Two things, it's really 4.5, but I rounded it up to five. And two, I gave Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson five stars as well. This is not the first time that I have given a Brandon Sanderson book five stars. Of course, the reaction from everyone is like, so We of Kings one star and Skyward five stars. Like, I mean, that's a dumb comparison. I could do a whole video explaining why that's a dumb comparison, but um, that's not what we're here to do today. Today, we're here to talk about why Skyward, a five star book for me, is extremely similar to The Name of the Wind, which is another five-star book for me. So again, maybe it's no accident that I like Skyward so much if it is actually just Name of the Wind. <laughs> just wanted to be clear up front that this video is all in good fun and I'm not actually arguing that Brandon Sanderson is like ripping off Name of the Wind with Skyward. But I do think it's funny how similar certain things are. So anyway, let's dive into it. Okay, for the first one is obvious and easy. Uh, a dead parent or dead parents. <laughs> plural in quotes case. I guess I should warn you now, mild spoilers for both series and both books. So FYI, I mean, none of, none of my things are like too major spoilery. It's not like the climax of both books is the same or anything like that. But I mean, the having of dead parents, I guess is spoilery because uh, when you start reading Name of the Wind, you don't yet know that those parents are going to die. Although the writing's really on the wall for that. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Spencer's dad is dead, and in Foth's case, both mom and dad are dead. So Spencer has it a little bit better. Yes, this is YA, so she gets to keep one parent. <laughs> Next, they are both prodigies. Spencer is a prodigy at flying, and Foth is a prodigy at both music and uh, the magic of sympathy, which is specific to the kinkiller world. So both prodigies with at least one dead parent, both of them are poor and have to scavenge to make ends meet. So in Spence's case, she's like getting rats out of caverns and they're being real thrifty at home. In Foth's case, he was literally living on the streets and eating whatever he could find. So kind of similar. And then they are both almost denied entrance into the elite school that they're trying to get into by a petty adult that is in some leadership role at that school. So in Spence's case, she's trying to attend flight school and because of the history and questions surrounding her dead father, they are trying to deny her a place at that school. And in Quoth's case, because he's a smart ass, <laughs> He's the smartest dumbass and the dumbest smartass. <laughs> he pisses off people before he even gets to attend the school in the admissions process. So they immediately take a dislike to him and don't want him going into the school. Don't want him becoming a student at the school. So both Spencer and Quoth, leading into the next point, are kind of looked out for by a teacher who has to stick out their neck for her, Spencer, for him, Quoth. So in Spencer's case, a teacher steps forward, sticks his neck out for her, and gets her admitted into the school because she's admitted to his class that he has control over. Kind of similarly in Quoth's case, he gets admitted to the school. Um, there's more people in his corner, but there's also more people against him. It's more of like a group groupings of people, not just one-on-one. -on -one. But there is a teacher that takes Quoth on to be like kind of under his wing um, and sticks his neck out for him in order to get him accepted 
and placed in the school. Um, I kind of already touched on the snark, but I mean, both Spensa, both Spensa and Quoth are incredibly sassy and snarky. And the mo this is actually the, like the moment, all that other stuff had been kind of like building up in the back of my mind, but I hadn't like made that connection yet. But Spensa mouthing off when she's barely, barely made it into this school. Really, it's by like the skin of her teeth and by just sheer dumb luck that she got into the school. And she's mouthing off at adults and mouthing off at privileged people. And I just, I'm my immediate reaction of like, oh no, why are you doing this? No good can come from this. Please be quiet. Why are you making it worse for yourself? I was like, this is how I feel about Quo. This is what it's like to read the King Killer Chronicle and going, no, Quo, no, why? Why, Quo? Why are you doing this to yourself? Stop it. Kind of jumping off of that, um, really sort of like a part two or like a second bullet point to that they are both snarky. Uh, comparison. Very specifically, <laughs> uh, they both get a privileged guy at their school to be widely called a demeaning nickname that starts with a J. So in Spence's case, she gets everybody to call the privileged guy Jerkface, and in Quoth's case, he writes a song about it and gets everybody to start calling someone Jackass. <laughs> so again, as, as soon as I got to Jerkface, I was like, so this is Jackass, Jackass? <laughs> is that what's happening right now? Why don't you write a song about it, Spencer, and really like nail down this comparison? <laughs> Next up, I have completely like di now diverging from the school or from being snarky or anything like that. They both have a secret and slightly maybe possibly crazy friend that lives subterraneally that they have to kind of like sneak out and visit in secret. So Spencer has Mbot the sentient AI ship, and Kvothe has Ori, who lives, dwells in the under thing, as she calls it, and she's basically the Luna Lovegood of King Killer. So they're both sneaking away in secret into, like, subterranean places to talk to a thing and to help out a thing, because actually, I didn't even write that down, but, like, not just talk to, but help out. So Spensa is getting, getting her friend to kind of fix up Mbot and, like, get it functional again and is stealing parts for it. Kvothe, even though he has very little money or food himself, he finds food and other things to bring to Ori, who's clearly like, she's living underground by herself. So he brings her food and things as well. I'm just saying. Editing Liana here. I forgot one when I was writing my list, one that I thought of while I was reading. And that is that both Spensa and Kvothe are denied access to amenities that regular students have access to. So in Spensa's case, she's denied access to like the bunks and the cafeteria that other students get to partake of. And in Kvothe's case, because he's a dumbass, he uh, is immediately banned from the library, so he has to be a student without actually having access to the library. Uh, so add that to the list. And lastly, I have that they are both searching um, at their respective schools for answers to the mystery surrounding their parents' death. Parents, where you just move the apostrophe for Quoth and Spencer, respectively. Parents, plural, parents, singular. And Spence, so Spencer is trying to find answers to what actually happened with her father. Are they covering something up? Is he actually at fault the way that they said? Is what is the deal? What is the situation? Is what the government says true about her father and how he died and etc. In Cloth's case, his parents, he believes, were killed by the Chandrian. He saw them, he thinks. So he needs to learn more about the Chandrian, um, why they would have singled out his family and how he can find them again. So there you have it. I think I have definitively proved that Skyward is in fact a retelling of Name of the Wind. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you've read either or both books, if you enjoyed either or both books, if you also spotted these similarities when you were reading them, maybe to the other way around, maybe you picked up Name of the Wind and you were like, this is low-key a retelling of Skyward. <laughs> Whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times as well, Delphine Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.